Hey, what's up? This is Benjamin. Welcome back for another video about IoT and embedded development. Today, I want to talk about a problem that I have and that I'm pretty sure you have as well, which is I have devices. I have tons of devices and uh, I need my computer, my, my main uh, computer to allow me to develop for those devices, right? And that means having literally gigabytes of IDEs and tool chains and various versions of tools for flashing, debugging and whatnot uh, lying around on my um, on my hard drive. And uh, it's kind of a pain because it's uh, pretty hard to, uh, to not break anything. You never know what's going to happen when you upgrade a, a particular tool chain uh, and uh, that's going to break a, a particular project that, that you've been working on. Uh, it's also a problem whenever I want to share code, uh, I or you want to share code with my friends and colleagues. What are, what are the dependencies? What are the things that they are expected to install? What are the um, maybe the libraries the, for which they need to clone and, and download source code somewhere on their, uh, on their machine and things like that. So what we're going to talk about today is... Um, a trend that's uh, that's been happening in the industry, uh, starting probably with web and cloud development, which is uh, this uh, um, notion of containers, right? You've heard about Docker and you, you've heard about this, uh, essentially this idea of describing uh, very, uh, very precisely what are the, uh, uh, the various uh, tools and uh, libraries, etc., that a particular piece of code may need at runtime so that when you want to deploy a, a particular uh, web service or application in the cloud, well, it's just a matter of provisioning uh, a particular container and ju just running it and it's super reproducible. Now, for the past few years, uh, this uh, notion of container uh, containers has been uh, pushed uh, sort of to the next level by means of also allowing to um, to containerize not only a, a runtime uh, piece of code but containerize a workspace, containerize the stuff that you need at development time, right? And for embedded development, that would be things like um, I need this particular flavor of CMake, I need this particular version of the GNU ARM embedded toolchain, I need uh, um, this, this, and that on my path for uh, for doing debugging, and um, yeah, that's the notion of um, um, the the remote uh, the remote developments, uh, remote development or uh, remote containers that. Um, you uh, maybe already uh, are familiar with uh, if you're a, a VS Code developer, you can already uh, leverage a, a Docker file and use it for um, uh, for it to become your um, uh, your uh, your local workspace. But something that's been happening very recently is taking this to even the next level, which is uh, not only do you describe the dependencies for compiling and, and running your code uh, in your workspace, but how about you also describe things like the plugins that uh, one uh, may want to install or may need to install to, um, to, to develop and to write code for a particular project. And this is called Code Spaces, right? It started with uh, Visual Studio Code Spaces. So the ability to uh, to leverage containers and uh, describing essentially, um, like I was uh, saying earlier, uh, the, the full workspace, all the plugins, all the GitHub repos uh, that may need to be cloned uh, and have that part of um, uh, like, Put it somewhere on the on the repository itself, so that anyone uh, can just uh, like fire up a Visual Studio Code Spaces instance, um, either in the cloud. Like if you have an Azure subscription, you can run it in the cloud or uh, or locally in VS Code or, or Visual Studio, and then uh, get started immediately with a super reproducible environment. Now, um, something that's uh, that's in beta at the moment is GitHub Code Spaces, which is, if I look at the say the Azure Autos Getting Started page, is something, and that works for any repo re really, uh, is is something that allows me, uh, granted that I have access to GitHub Code Spaces, wh which I do because I'm part of the beta, and soon uh, hopefully you will be too. Please, uh, I mean, j just sign up if you if you like the video and, and if you like what you see. What's essentially happening is, oh yeah, sure, um, the Azure Autos getting started looks pretty cool, except that it's going to be embedded development. And if I clone this on my uh, computer, 
it might be um, a nightmare uh, and it might take me quite some time until I've figured all uh, the dependencies I need uh, to install, etc. Although the Azure Autos uh, team is doing a pretty nice job and pretty great job at, at, at making it super simple for you with a bunch of scripts, it's still going to, at a minimum, it's it's still going to take you some time because you're going to download uh, lots of stuff. So how about instead, I just straight from the repo, create a so-called uh, code space, a new code space. And what's now happening behind the scenes is that GitHub is uh, firing up a, a VM, essentially a virtual machine that's going to be running uh, a particular container. And this particular container, what is it? Like... If there's no instruction whatsoever in the repo, uh, no code spaces specific instructions in the repo, this container will be essentially a Debian, um, a Debian virtual machine, and my IDE will not have any particular uh, additional plugins installed. But if in the repo, uh, as part of this uh, dev container folder, um, code spaces finds this. Then what's happening, uh, and it's pretty straightforward, uh, I think you, can, you get the idea, um, code spaces figures that uh, there is a particular Docker file that should drive uh, the, uh, uh, like the, the, um, the provisioning of the, of the workspace itself. There's a list of all the plugins that may make sense uh, or may actually be mandatory for developing for this particular project uh, here. C++ tools and CMake tools. That makes uh, that makes some sense, actually. Um, the fact that uh, there, there might be some additional uh, instructions, for example, the Azure Autos getting started repo has a bunch of sub-modules that need to be uh, cloned as well. So that's what we see here. And uh, looking back at the, the Docker file that was described here, what's in there, my guess is that it will somehow describe the fact that, hey, there is... You need toolchain. Uh, you need a toolchain for uh, for ARM uh, for compiling for your your various uh, Azure Autos um, uh, uh, targets, uh, and yeah, apparently there's something along those lines. So we uh, start off off a uh, Debian base image. We install a bunch of uh, tools that are going to be needed for compilation, uh, Git for cloning, um, the code, uh, CMake and Ninja for cross-compiling and generating all the, um, uh, the CMake files, and then the toolchain, uh, downloading the latest, uh, or almost the latest, I'm, I'm not sure actually, but a particular version of, of the GNU ARM embedded toolchain, and that's the world point, a particular version, uh, and we put it on the path. And that's it. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, it was me talking for maybe a couple minutes. In the meanwhile, the repo is now fully um, cloned. Uh, the workspace is fully provisioned uh, all the way to the point where if I just quickly check, oh, well, this actually looks and feels very much like VS Code. Uh, uh, what if I uh, um, uh, open up the terminal? Uh, and let's see, like, this is like, this is obviously my, uh, um, my Edge uh, web browser. But here, the console I have is uh, for a machine, a container that's running in the cloud, and that's um, running exactly what was described in the Docker file. So if you remember, and if you saw earlier, there was something apparently in the work folder. Yes, there is the GCC. Um, there's the ARM toolchain in, in the path, right? And so that's essentially um, yeah, our, uh, our environment. And we have the workspace that's been, uh, that's been cloned. Uh, and we're going to try and actually compile the code now. So the code is, uh, in the getting started, we have a bunch of um, uh, various uh, examples for uh, various boards, for the MX chip, for a uh, microchip uh, SAM E54 uh, device. I want to target the STM32. Uh, so let's open the associated workspace. And uh, let's try and uh, compile the code. Maybe we can have a quick look at the code as soon as it opens. So this is an Azure Autos application. So we'll probably find a bunch of C files in there. 
Uh, actually, uh, let's first configure and uh, let's make sure that we um, properly configure the, uh, the project. Uh, it's CMake asking us to do that. This is actually what's going to allow us to compile properly, to have um, code completion working as well. Uh, yeah, there we go, IntelliSense. Uh, this update, I don't really care. All right, what do we have? We have a main uh, with um, a bunch of, um, of threads for initializing the Wi-Fi. Uh, probably initializing the, the connection to Azure IoT at some point, um, et cetera, et cetera. And this is like full-blown VS Code with code completion and so on, which is, I mean, we're in the browser, right? So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I want to compile the code. Um, how should I go about compiling the code? How about I hit F7? There we go, cross-compiling. Uh, maybe I went a bit too fast because um, this is the code uh, straight off of the GitHub repo. And if this is code that is meant to showcase how uh, this device is gonna be connected to Azure IoT, I bet uh, I should start by configuring um, uh, the code and configuring the application. So Wi-Fi wise, uh, those are my credentials. Um, in terms of IoT hub connection, uh, I'm gonna use um, the Azure IoT Hub Explorer, which actually might not be the best idea now that I think about it. I am uh, running off, um, I mean, I'm doing development in the browser and in the cloud to sort of show you that there is no thing whatsoever that you need to install on your uh, computer. Uh, Azure IoT Explorer in that case is actually running on my laptop. Um, so I guess I should have thought about it before. Uh, I should have shown you how to use the Azure portal, maybe to do everything straight from the cloud, but anyhow, you get the idea and Azure IT Explorer is a cool um, tool anyways. So we're gonna use it um, later on to test that everything's working properly. Uh, so yeah, I see that my code is now compiled, but that, I mean, I still need to configure uh, properly everything. Uh, I need to uh, yeah, provision a device um, in my IoT Hub. There is no device in this particular IoT Hub. Let's create the STM32. Uh, whatever, zero, zero, 001. Uh, so that's how I called it. I'm doing everything in real time. So uh, I think the video might end up being maybe 15 or 20 minutes long. Um, but I mean, I really recommend that you stay till the end because uh, you, you get the, the, the full real time demo. Um, the password or like the key uh, to connect the connection string. That'll be it. Uh, and now I'm gonna recompile once more. Uh, it should be much, much faster because I did uh, only um, touch one file. Uh, compiling, yep, um, there we go. So we have now, I have the binary. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, how do I run it on my device? Uh, my device is obviously not hooked up in some data center, uh, Azure data center in the cloud. It's not like I'm gonna be able to directly um, com copy and, and flash the device uh, from my browser. Um, so what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna uh, plug the device on my laptop and I'm going to use uh, Open OCD and do over the air Open OCD to, uh, to flash the device. So um, that's the, um, yeah, that's the device over here. It's, Right now it's, I mean, it's uh, uh, idle and not running anything. We need to put the code on it. So uh, I'm gonna use Open OCD on my machine and um, ask Open OCD to open a, um, a TCP port uh, so that um, remote um, tools may be able to connect to it. So that's Open OCD running. I think you probably, yeah, you can sort of guess uh, that the, um, the LED right here is uh, blinking, except that it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard to see, but uh, the device is now in um, debug, uh, debug mode. And one more thing that I need to do is make sure that from my cloud workspace, I can push code. Like typically if I try to debug uh, with F5, uh, you see that the, what the, the, um, uh, uh, this particular workspace is trying to do is trying to use open OCD over the air and over TCP to connect to a, a remote instance of open OCD, except that it's 
in my case, it won't be running on localhost. It's running on my on my laptop, right? Which is behind my firewall, behind my um, DSL router, etc. So I need to use. Um, there's many ways to, to do that. I could open. I, I could open up the, the port in my firewall, uh, or I could um, use a tool such as ngrok to create a tunnel, uh, which can be accessed at this particular endpoint, which allows for. Uh, like anyone knowing uh, this particular combination of host name and port uh, allows anyone to directly talk to my um, open OCD service, hence to my device. And so let's try and debug. Uh, so it's going to take a few uh, a few seconds. Well, we see that the device is now uh, the, the workspace is now talking to my open OCD instance. There is code being pushed. Yep, uh, the so the device is now now has the binary directly pushed and 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 copied in the RAM, and we're going to run the code off of the RAM. Um, breakpoint, nice. There's a breakpoint that was automatically um, triggered and hit uh, straight uh, at the beginning of the main, and uh, that's fine. And now, if I go to the Azure IoT Explorer. Let's see, devices, uh, refresh. Oh, that's interesting. The device is now reporting that it's uh, a plug and play device and uh, that uh, it's uh, following and conforming to this particular model. Interesting. So I bet the device is actually connected now. Uh, let's see uh, if the device is connected uh, and if the device is plug and play, we can uh, very quickly from IoT Hub Explorer look at um, maybe the uh, properties that it supports. Apparently, I can change how often I want telemetry to be sent. Um, so let's try and update that to one. Mm, has been accepted. That's a good sign. Yep, good. Uh, now we have telemetry being sent every second. Uh, let's see, there's commands, uh, set LED state. Sure, uh, let's try. Uh, you see the LED? So that's not the one. There should be another one that should be turned on. Let's see, true. There we go. We turn the LED on and off again. Uh, telemetry, let's see. Let's see if we have telemetry coming uh, off. The wire and of IoT Hub, yeah, temperature is uh, is being sent and is being sent uh, quite often, and I can uh, obviously change uh, change that and and reconfigure that reconfigure that over the air. Uh, I could obviously also go uh, in my code and put some uh, breakpoints. Maybe uh, I want to put a breakpoint whenever uh, a command is being sent to toggle the LED, so I can put a breakpoint. Uh, it might not be uh, set. I might need to restart the app for the breakpoint to be properly um, activated, Let, but let's try. Uh, send command. Yeah, I think uh, yeah the LED turned on, so I think I, I would need to restart the app for the for the um, the breakpoint to be uh, enabled. But you get the idea. It might not be perfect, or this as of today, uh, you might find some glitches here and there, but. I think it gives you the um, a sense of why you should start thinking already, even if you're not aiming for having your developers and your uh, users uh, de develop from the cloud. They might still use VS Code or Visual Studio for development, but please start thinking about uh, using the um, uh, the, the technology, the dev container technology that I've described to already start uh, describing in Docker files what are the dependencies for your projects. Maybe use uh, the, the code spaces uh, dev containers uh, description for describing the plugins as well. And yeah, you, you will start realizing that it makes things much, much uh, easier to reproduce. It helps with uh, also continuous integration and making sure that you have reproducible builds. And uh, yeah, that's what I had for you. Uh, check out uh, Codespaces, sign up for the GitHub Codespaces beta. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I, I try to post more and more often these days. And if you have ideas or suggestions of things you would like me to cover in the future, just ping me on Twitter or uh, just uh, share in the comments. Until next time, bye.